Hello everyone and welcome to another video for Elephant VFX Patreon feed. This video that you are about to watch, it is a free chapter of my video Houdini Solaris and Katana Interoperability that is available on my Patreon channel, link in the description. This is the introductory chapter that belongs to the first video, which is around two and a half hours. There is a second video that will also be published on my Patreon channel that will be published soon. If you want access to the full video and also to my entire library of visual effects training, please take a look at my Patreon and consider becoming a subscriber. All the information in the description of the video. Today I'm talking about Houdini Solaris and Katana interoperability. What does that even mean, right? So basically, this video, it's, it's going to show you how to exchange data from Solaris to Katana. And if you wanted to, also from Katana to Solaris. Or I guess we could apply the same techniques and the same workflows to any 3D software that supports USD. Because everything that we're going to see today is going to happen under the USD umbrella. In the past, um, moving data between Solaris and Katana, or actually not Solaris, but Houdini and Katana, everything was done using Alembics or maybe using other file formats. The problem with that is that some things like, for example, instances or scattering systems or set tracing or layout was actually quite difficult to move from Houdini to Katana because Katana doesn't really have a framework. I mean, Katana is a framework, right? So basically everything needs to be built by the user in order to use the data coming from another software. And um, assets, for example, that was very easy to export from Houdini to Katana, but when it comes to instances, set tracing, scattering system, it was a nightmare. It was very, very difficult. If you work in a visual effects studio, you probably have access to tools that can do that for you. So as a user, as a lighting artist or look dev artist or scene assembly artist or environment artist, you don't need to worry about these things because everything is done uh, by other departments. So basically um, your technical directors or the pipeline people working at the studio will provide tools for you in order to do these things. But if you have to do it yourself, it, you know, it's very, very difficult. You have to build everything by yourself. But now thanks to USD, we don't need tools to do that. You can do it by yourself. It's super fast, it's efficient, is a simple, um, so yeah, it's a no-brainer now. And moving the stuff between Solaris and Katana is a very, very common topic in a visual effects studio. Maybe what you're wondering now is why do I need to use both? Why do I need to use Solaris and Katana? Aren't they scene assemblers? Aren't they, bo both of them are scene assemblers in, in, in a way, right? Yes, you are completely right. But keep in mind one thing. These videos that I try to do here on my Patreon, they are targeted to visual effects professionals, right? If you work in a big visual effects house, if you work at Weta or ILM or MPC or Framestore, Double Negative, you, you name it, they all use different software, but Katana is probably the most common software used for scene assembler in all, all of those companies. I mean, 3D software at least. I mean, Nuke would be like the one that everyone uses, but uh, that is for uh, compositing and other things. But when it comes to scene assembly, um, look the layout, environment construction and whatnot, at the very end, everyone uses Katana. Maybe this is going to change in the future because Solaris is getting better and better and better. Unfortunately, 
in my opinion. It is not there yet to replace Katana, maybe in the future, but for now, all the shots end up at some point in Katana, at least in big visual effects studio. Of course, if we're talking about smaller uh, visual effects houses, small uh, VFX boutiques, they use all the software. Uh, Katana is targeted for big visual effects studios and big um, feature animation companies like Pixar and Disney, all of these use uh, Katana. Imageworks, of course, Sony Pictures Imageworks, that's where Katana was born actually. Um, so, so yeah, basically I wanna show you how to move data from Solaris to Katana doing some, you know, hopefully uh, interesting exercises. Um, <clears throat> so, I have another slide here and that that's it, right? I don't have any more slides, so this is not gonna be super boring. It's just some um, data that I wanna share with you before we move into into the action points. So, yeah, Houdini and Solar Solaris and Katana interoperability. That's that's what it means. Like moving data from Solaris to Katana, and if we wanted to, from Katana to Solaris. Although this. I wouldn't say it's a very realistic scenario moving from Katana to Solaris because again, where you end up finalizing the shots is in Katana, not in Solaris. But if you wanted to, you could do this as well. You could move data from Katana to Solaris. Actually, you could move data from Solaris to Katana and from Katana to Maya if you wanted to, or you know, any software that supports USD and any software that supports whatever render engine you decided to go with should work okay so that that's what i mean by katana and solaris interoperability um so now i'm going to explain to you the five different exercises that we're going to be doing and these five are realistic scenarios this is something that i've seen in the past and something that I'm pretty sure is happening uh, right now in visual effects houses and something that will happen also in the future. Um, at least if Solaris and Katana keep uh, being like the, the, the main software uh, to do, to do um, scene assembly and lighting. Um, so the five different exercises that we're going to be doing is uh, like these, these, uh, these three, but before doing that, I want to go with you and we want to make together working templates. What are working templates? Well, I have plenty of videos on my Patreon about Solaris and about Katana. So you have already a lot of information there. And if you're familiar with Katana and Solaris, you probably want to skip these first couple of videos, right? I've made in the past templates for asset creation in both Solaris and uh, Katana. And I've made templates for working on lighting shots in both Katana and Solaris. So that is already covered in, in some of my videos. What I'm going to do here is what I call a working template. What is a working template? Well, a working template is not something super specific about asset creation or um, sequence lighting or whatever. It is just some kind of template that gives you the basics of what you need in order to create stuff. And by stuff, I mean anything. Assets, lighting, environments, uh, volumetrics, uh, terrains, whatever you want. But something that is already there in place for you to start working on CG content. Um, so these templates are gonna be simpler than other templates that I built in the past, but they're gonna be somehow efficient and somehow something very easy to use. We're gonna start by making a template, a working template in Katana. And that's gonna take a little bit longer because Katana is basically an empty canvas, right? It's a blank canvas. You have to start from scratch. When you open Katana, there is nothing there. So you need to build everything by yourself. So we're gonna build that working template together. It's gonna take maybe half an hour, 40 minutes, let's see. Um, the good thing is like, once you have that template, you can reuse it anytime. Same thing in Solaris. We're gonna do the same or a very similar 
working template in Solaris. It's going to take less time to build that in Solaris because Solaris already provides some tools uh, in order to do some specific tasks. In Katana, you have to build pretty much everything from scratch, but in Solaris, you can actually borrow some of the tools uh, that uh, come already with Houdini. So we're going to save a little bit of time there. We're going to try to build templates that replicate each other. So basically, we're going to try to do like sister templates in both Katana and Solaris. They might have a little bit of uh, difference here and there. They're not going to be exactly the same, but they are going to support the same type of data, which is what we want, especially when exchanging data between applications. Once we have that, then we can start with these five different exercises that I have here. And by the way, there are many other types of data that we can export from Solaris to Katana, uh, including animation caches, including FX caches, including volumetrics, including height fields, um, animation, um, lights. I mean, there are many things I mean, that we can export from Solaris to Katana. And especially now, thanks to USD, we can export pretty much anything that you can think of. But I'm not covering absolutely everything here. Right, that will take me a little while. But but again, if, if this is something that is interesting to you, let me know. We can do videos about exporting FX or exporting animation caches or whatever in the future. Uh, today, we're going to be focusing mostly on environments and especially in instances and, and, uh, and scattering systems because that's something that was very painful to do in the past. And now, thanks to USC, it's very easy to do. So the first exercise that we're going to be doing here and by the way, uh, well, I'll show you in a minute, but um, we, I just created like this very simple shot, um, but it has kind of all the elements that we want to have in, in a real scenario. So it's not just playing with cubes and spheres. I, you know, it took, took me some time to, to build something that is representative of what, what I want to achieve here. Um, again, it's not a shot for a movie. It's not as complex. It's something that I put together in a couple of days. But uh, at least it will have everything, all the ingredients in the recipe uh, to put together a shot. Um, right. So, yeah, the first exercise is about using full assets from Solaris in Katana. And when I say full assets, this is what I, we would consider, generally speaking, in visual effects, hero assets, right? So th those would be like the, the most important assets in your production. It could be a character, it could be a building, it could be a spaceship, it could be a robot, it could be whatever. But something that we consider um, hero assets, those assets that are quite important for, for the production. Um, and in that export, again, I call this full export because it's going to contain both the geometry and the look of the asset. So at the, at the end of the day, this hero asset is going to come in a USD layer, like a single USD layer. This uh, single USD layer is going to be referencing both the geometry and the look that has been created in Solaris. But then we can import that layer, that USD layer uh, in Katana and take it from there, right? Use that asset in whatever shots that we need to do in Katana. Something we can do as well with these uh, full hero assets, we can modify those looks in Katana. So if for whatever reason we need to change the look, we can just create a layer here, modify the look. So this will be like another USC layer that we create in Katana. And then if we're happy with the results, we can just export it out as another USC layer. So we have the modifications of that look in a new USC layer. Maybe we don't have to export it because we just want to modify the, the look for a very specific shot because it has very specific lighting conditions. Then you do it there and that's fine. You have it in your Katana script and you don't need to worry more about it. But if you wanted to, you can export it as a USC layer and you can bring it back to Houdini if you wanted to or you can bring it back to Maya, or you can just bring it back to a different shot inside of Katana. Okay, so that is like the first exercise. 
um, when dealing with hero assets. This is a very, very realistic scenario in a visual effects house. Um, so hopefully that's, that's uh, useful for you. Another exercise that we're going to be doing also with assets is exporting geometry assets from Solaris to Katana. Geometry assets are not full assets like up here, meaning that we're going to export only the geometry. Okay. Why is that? Well, this is also a very realistic scenario in a visual effects house because, well, to be honest, the strength of Katana or one of the strengths in Katana is looked at. Also lighting, also scene assembly, and uh, also sequence lighting, right? But LookDev is very powerful in Katana. So there are chances that in your visual effects studio, geometry gets published from whatever software. It could be Maya, it could be um, uh, Houdini. In our case, it's going to be Houdini. So we're going to be exporting the geometry in a USD layer, right? So we have the geometry in a USD layer. And this gets exported from, um, from, in our case, Houdini Solaris. Then it goes to Katana. And in Katana, we're going to be doing the look dev. Okay, so we have the look dev. And this look dev and this uh, exercise is going to have three different variations. One is doing the look dev in Katana using Katana look files. So we're going to have the look dev exported as Katana look file. This is probably what you want to do if you're planning to finish your shots in Katana, because Katana look files are very efficient. They are a proprietary format of Katana. They work very, very well. And we've been using Katana look files for many, many years in pretty much every visual effects movie that you can think of and animated movies as well. And from here, you would be doing your, you know, your set dressing, then your camera work, then your lighting, then your render passes, whatever. Another variation of this exercise would be creating the look dev in Katana that we did here. But in this case, instead of exporting a Katana look file, we're going to be exporting a USD look file. So this would be exported as USD look file. And this USD look file will work in conjunction with this USD geometry layer. So when you put both of them together, you get a full asset. The same thing that we did in the very first exercise, but in this time, instead of exporting everything from Solaris, we're exporting half from Solaris, and then we're creating the other half, which is the look file in Katana, okay? And then if you wanted to, you carry on working on your shot, so the same thing that we did here, it goes to set dressing and it goes to uh, instancing and scattering and, and lighting and whatnot. Or you could export this, this layer, this only layer, you can export that to Solaris or you can export that to Maya or whatever. And then the last variation of this exercise would be doing a full asset export, which is combining this USD layer with this USD layer that we created before, this one here, which is the look, and just exporting a new USD layer that is the full asset. So we end up in this situation with the same as this situation. We ended up with one single layer that is referencing the geometry and is referencing the look dev, but now it's just one single thing. And then you can use that again in all your shots, either in Houdini or Katana or any other software. Okay, so these are the two first exercises, but as you can see, this one has three different variations. Those, these two are exercises about assets. Okay, and then these are exercises about environments. Okay, so when it comes to environments, and this is actually what I'm very excited about, is that Everything that had to do with environments, it was a pain in the ass to export from Houdini to Katana, as I was describing before. Everything had to be done with PTC files or with uh, point clouds or with uh, uh, Alembics. So it, it was very, very hard, believe me. 
um, if you work in a visual effects studio, maybe you haven't experienced how tough it was to work with this type of data because you have tools that, you know, help you out to, to handle this information. But if you ever try to build everything from scratch, it was really painful. Uh, you, you really had to be like a technical director to, to be able to, to do this type of work. Um, but now, thanks to USD, it's super simple. Um, so we have three different exercises. The first one involves manual set dressing created in Solaris and exported to Katana. And that would be, let's say you have an environment, let's say you're building a city. So this is your terrain, whatever. Then you have maybe like a road that does something like that. This is your road. And then you do some manual set tracing. So for example, you have your library of USD assets that have been published. And let's say those are buildings. So you would put like a building here, and another building there, and another building here, and another one there. So this is all manual set tracing. You just reference USD published assets. You place them in the scene, whatever you want. And then you create some kind of set tracing. So we're going to see how to use that data. Because the only thing that we're exporting from Solaris, it is the transformation data. It's the points that define where those buildings are placed. But each of those would be using a geometry. And that geometry is also published as a USD layer. So basically, we would get a USD layer that defined, well, not one, but multiple USD layers that define the assets that you're using, in this case, buildings. Then you would get another USD layer that defines the set tracing. And when everything gets combined, you get this. Okay. So that's the first exercise when it comes to, to environment work. Then we're going to take a look at how to use instances for hero assets in Solaris to render them in Catan. What are hero instances? Well, hero instances are let's say that in this same environment you have cars and then you have one car here one car there one car there one car there and all of that it's done not manual as before we did with uh with environment with uh, uh buildings but it's done by uh, uh with instances right so you have some kind of procedural scattering system that places cars into points well it's kind of the same as as we can see here right so basically, you would have a USD file, which is one car, and that car comes with lookdev already. So it's a final product, it's a final asset. Then you would have another car, and then you would have another car, and so on. And then you would have another USD layer that defines the instance position and the instance behavior. That would go here. And when you combine all of these, then you get that right which is the cars moving around the roads or or you know just driving through the highway or whatever your instances are doing okay um that's it so it's basically like plug and play you bring your assets you bring your instance information you put everything together and you get the final output great and then the final exercise that i want to do is similar, which is also using instances, but in this case for background assets. What are background assets? So let's say that now I want to add trees all around this city and in the park that is here in the middle, whatever. So that would also be created using procedural scattering systems. So basically exporting point clouds that define where uh, the instances of those trees are going to be placed. But in our case, we want to do the look dev in Solaris while we do either the lighting or the scene assembly. And we're going to be exporting custom attributes from Solaris so we can target specific trees or whatever other asset you're using based on custom attributes that we create in Solaris. So for example, I can have different families of trees. I can have like an oak tree and then I can have like... Um, um, I don't know, something that I call uh, maybe a uh, green tree and something that I call maybe yellow tree because, you know, it's autumn and leaves are dying. Um, and I can have something that is like a bonsai or whatever, right? So then I can easily select 
all the trees that are oak or all the trees that have the property yellow or all the trees that have the property green and then assign, create materials for those in katana and assign those materials procedurally to all those trees and that would work perfectly fine and if i need to go back to solaris and change the trees because i need to add twice the amount of trees i can just do that export this layer that define the instances and then i just need to apply again uh, all these uh, materials that i created and procedurally they're going to be automatically updated in in katana and everything will look uh, just perfectly fine okay so yeah it's a lot of things to cover uh, again there are more data that we can export from solaris to katana i'm not we're not talking at all about effects or animation or volumetrics or um, lighting information we can export any kind of data but this is something that is um i think this is the a good amount of, of things that we're going to cover in this video i'm not sure if i'm going to be able to cover absolutely everything in one video um i mean i guess i would be able to do it but it's going to go for i don't know it's going to take me like four hours or, or more i don't know uh, let's see how it goes maybe if if it takes me like three hours i might stop the video and and create a couple of different videos so i can publish one this month one uh, another one the next month because otherwise it's gonna yeah it's gonna be a very long video who knows let's see how it goes um but yeah let's take a look at all the material now so you can actually see with your own eyes um all of these things that i'm explaining here because i know it's a bit boring to explain this on on the slide uh, so I'm going to show you, a, uh, you know, a few visuals now so you can actually understand a little bit better what I'm trying to achieve here, okay? But yeah, all of these ex five different exercises are very realistic scenarios, okay? This is not something that I just came out of my mind. This is something that I've experienced before in visual effects houses and something that people are experiencing these days in visual effects houses. So this is very relevant, okay? This is not some something that I just you know just made up this is um very realistic production uh production environment scenario so let's take a look at everything and let's jump into houdini and and katana and let's start working on on all of this mm -hmm. 